What's up guys, it's time for the walk around of the big GU in its current form, in its current state, which is dirty, but it looks cool, so let's get going. Eh? Yeah, now I'm studying like a milli rocket. Skin clear, still look your Andy Miller knockers, money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket, yeah. So first up, and the thing that everyone sees is the custom bar that me and Ashton made. It took us about two days or so to build this thing, and it's not the nicest world, it's not the nicest fitment, but I think this is one of the best looking GU bars, just because it's so tucked up, which is why I like that. It's definitely my taste and my flavor. Down here, good old, same old entire combo that I have been running on the car for a year or so, which is the Goodyear Wrangler MTR with the Kevlar sidewall in a 37 by 12 and 8 and a half, 17. And we got KMC gridded nade 17 by 9 neg 38 rims, which are moving on down the car. Got the fat fab circle four inch powder coat to match all the other white gear on the car. This thing sounds bloody nuts when the window's down, but when the window's up, don't even hear it. So yeah, I definitely like this uh, and I love how, how it sits low and it's got the car in the bottom just to get really bloody, just packed up. Looks good, right. Got chrome mm -mm. mirrors from a wagon because the ones that come on the utes look like <laughs> Then we got all the little nice, awesome bits of paint coming off because um, the painter that I sent the car to when I first bought the car did a really cheap job, which was good for me because I had no cash, but definitely going to need a re repaint at some point. So comment what color you think that we should paint it or if we should just keep it white, yeah? Moving down, we've got the GME XRS here in the car with the standard size aerial, but this is in the white and, and chrome fit out, which is match, match the car very well. And then we also have a angle bracket down the bottom. So that is when I'm running the big tall aerial and I don't have this one, I can fold it down to get out of the way so I can get into car parks and all and that. And yes, I do have to undo the actual aerial to get to fold down. Don't know why why people hate on that so much because it has the practicality to be able to fold that way. So, I mean, guys, come on. We've got the P core tray, but this is a very simplified version of it with a lot more tube and a lot more weight taken out of it to make it way more simple and way more cost saving effective for what I do use the car for and what the plan for the car originally was. Because the first plan was we bought this car cheap, we were just going to paint it, chuck a tray, lift, wheels, tyres, then I kind of fell in love with the big G here, so now it's my baby. This is what this was one of the most controversial things I think that I did to the car back in back when I first built it, which back when I first built the car I was 17, now I'm 19. I've grown up just a smidge, so I probably wouldn't have done this if I was building it now, but I do love how it looks. I think it looks looks really cool, it looks very different to everything else. Makes the tray a little bit less practical, but I don't think there's much much practical gear on this car, it's just fun. So went with that because it's fun. And up on top mounted on the headboard, we have a rigid chase bar. That has got to be one of the coolest bits of lighting tech I've ever seen and ever had my hands on and I love it two bits. So that is never coming off this car because I just do love it that much. Now down here we got the, the party part when we went to the boys at G Turbo. We got a Manta exhaust system that comes back to pretty much just behind the cab. And because of all the superior work that I've done 
to the car and then adding a bone range fuel tank. A three inch exhaust would not fit out, out the back, so side dump was our only option. If I had my time making again, wouldn't have put it up this high. Would have gone down here so the soot would have covered the eaten tires, but now I've got soot that is burnt in to my paint. So not too overly stoked with that. Probably one of the, the, the dumbest choices, but it's a really nice fabricated bit of kit from the guys down at G Turbo. Oh, I forgot to mention the uh, flares that everyone hates on. So if I'm gonna be making a set of tube guards, I'm not gonna say soon, because it probably won't be soon, but at some point tube guards will be coming. Down here, we, we got the secondary set of wheels and, and tires that were given to us by Bob Jane and Teton Marts. This is a 17 by nine KMC Terra in a neg 38 offset, so it matches the, this set, so it has the same poke and all of that, so it all looks right when I'm changing wheels and tires. And we got a 33 by 12 and a half BFG KM3 mud terrain tire. So this is the fully legal set, and then we got the laden set, which is very nice. Around the back, as you can see, got the Superior G Turbo, Patriot Games Twins, and a GUD cow, just because I think it adds a bit more elements to the back because the window looked very bare. Down here, we got the p -Core Trail Next. Now, I was never going to tow with this car, and I never planned on it, and it was just meant to be the Akenda go out, be it on ch ch Chuck, you're on the back, but definitely going to be taking some Gen 2 trailers out with this thing now that has the power to actually oh. One more thing at the back of the Eaton car, we have a long range fuel tank, which wasn't a mod that I planned, but it's a mod that I did need. You would have seen that the tank sucked itself in because the breather got clogged on the factory Eaton tank. So the only option was when we were in, in Perth to get a new tank. And there's no point buying a new factory tank when I can get a brown Davis tank that can, that can actually take me further. Now, let's go to the engine bay because that's the fun stuff. Because of how tucked the bumper is, it's pretty hard to get the bonnet open. You definitely need two hands to do it. You can't just get your hand in there and then pop it up. Now, if you're wondering what this is for, this is because my gas and struts currently do sweet nothing. So we'll get this in there. And now it is safe. Now let's talk about everything that's going on in here. But before we do, I forgot to mention two things on the front. Got rigid tube lights in the bar. I did that just because it needed something else to fill the area. And, you, and you'll see there's no other big lights on the car, which it used to have with this old bar. But we're going to do a big light bar up on the roof. So that'll come, once again, not soon, but at some point. Talking about little lights, I got bush doofs. And is in these lights, I built the light myself getting the center in the light, but whilst I was polishing the front, I left the gel on for too long, so it burnt back in, so there was pretty much no point in polishing. But these bush of centers, compared to the candles that these things come with, great mod. And you got all your RGB in there too. On the out and side bar, I took that off because I just, I'm not a massive fan of the crazy lights, but it's a, it's a ZD30, so the engine bay is never going to look very good. It's always going to look a bit janky because of all the excess stuff that Nissan adds on to those ZDs. So getting the top mount into cooler off definitely opened it up and made it a little bit easier to work on. We got a fat fab four inch air box that is made up with the snorkel. We also got their intake and pipe, which is go to the factory turbo location. We've got a dual battery kit that the car came with, but we've got a custom made 
harness for the dual battery system and, and all the mods done by Helm. So we measured up all of the distances and what and what wires we needed and then Helm built me a full custom standard loan harness for the whole accessory system in the car, which 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 worked very well with the T VMS road, which is inside the car, which we will see later. More power mods. So everything we've done to make 310 horsepower, and we haven't dynoed on 37s, but I would guess somewhere around 270 horsepower, and this thing does math, this thing moves. But to get that, that power, we got a G Turbo G320 Gold wheel. We got uh, plus 100 G Turbo in vectors. We got a DAT cool front mount pipe kit. Obviously the Fats Fab air box and we got a very, very sexy part. The PWR 600 by 300 into cool core. If you know cars, you know PWR and you know that this is the only option to go if you are making power with any car. So, but other than those, couple of mods plus a three inch exhaust and a custom uh, tune by the guys at G Turbo. And we have 310 horse power and 708 newton meters of torque to the tires. So, and to handle the power that this thing's making, we put a NPC 800 newton meter clutch in it, which I really like the feel of it on the metal, super soft. It feels softer than the factory arch and where it actually bites, it feels a lot better. And that also means that I'm not going to burn up, burn up a clutch or do anything weird with that side of things. Over there we have a Megalife Lithium starter. One of the best things about these, these have a, have a jump pack built into the actual battery. So if you see up here, there's a button on, on top. If you just press that, that opens up a extra cell to give you enough power to start your car, which is very cool. Interior time. Where do we even begin? It's, it looks very simple, but there's a lot that's been changed in here. Probably beginning with how you actually get in. We got um, we got a custom set of tough grips, which are two on that side, one on this side. Just add a bit of the exterior colouring into the inside because factory GU interiors are not very nice. So um, this thing was factory a three seater with a bench in the seat, but I've changed it to a two seater with a certain console, which I love. It, this is a little bit impractical not being able to carry the third person, but I mean, they should have just taken their own car. So I'll just take me and my mate, just one mate. Over here on the right hand side of the wheel, we have the uh, Adark Tobe Pro, which is part of the Peak or Trail Connect harness. Everything comes in that to get 100% trailer brakes going on your car. Check it out. Up here, the main piece of the car, the Redux TVMS screen, which is paired to a TVMS Rogue behind the seat in here and a BC DC Core 40. So this is the secondary power station to this whole car. And I'm pretty sure that this was one of the very first TVMS Rogues in Oz to run in a car, which is very cool. Well, I control on here, just for now, I got front and rear locker, and then I got the rear chase bar on and off, and then to change modes on that rear chase bar. And then I also have icons here for a water tank and a front bar, because that's linked into the wiring harness, those, those two things, because I wanted to add everything that I think that I will do to the car so I don't have to add excess wires and excess cables into a harness to make it more complicated. And the guys down at Helm gave me a full wiring diagram of everything that's going on in my car. So if I ever have a issue with, with anything, I can see which, which wires going where and yeah, just like what color and everything is so I can fault find and figure out everything. 
Under the seat here, we have a ARB twin air compressor. Pumps up, pumps up big tires really fast. Very happy with that. And that is mounted on a Scrub King 4x4 mount, which they make tons of different mounts for everything that you could possibly think of. And I also have their mounts um, on the front of my seat to be able to carry a small fire ex extinguisher fire is something I I don't I wouldn't really like to mess around with so I take it pretty seriously and just having all the right precautions there to protect my myself and my car against that if something was to go wrong got a Sony head and it's super just simple just chucked into that a uh, throw grenade throw uh, controller they work really well on autos, but on manual cars, it's not really much of a use for them. Yeah, you control everything manually because it's a manual car. So, XRS handheld piece. Got a Ismo shift knob for the transfer case and a likewise shift knob for the gear box, which is really, really nice having that um, long handle because to shift up, I, I push like that and then to shift back, I, I grab the front and just chuck it back when you're going fast. So I do really like that. Got red arc gauges over in here. Only one of them works at the moment, which is my boost and EGT, but I got a water temp and oil pressure gauge that I'm hooking up soon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it for the car, except for all the very, very juicy goodness that is underneath all the superior gear. So let's go check out that. It just keeps on going, like I keep, I don't remember how far it goes up. So, and it just keeps on going like, this thing's gonna roll over, right? Eh? I'll just keep it there. <laughs> yeah, mate, that's what you do. Ugh, don't need that. <sighs> It's kind of cool, just a little bit. I like it. <laughs> okay, let's look at everything that's going on in the back end first, then we'll move on to the everything good that's going on in the front. Let's go. As you can see, it is very dirty under here because you build the car to use it. And I thought I cleaned it decently, but obviously not, I've been some pretty dirty. First, first thing that we did as soon as we got to Superior, Long arm. If you got a GU or a GQ, you need long arms in your car. These will change how it how it rides fully better, how it flexes, how it goes off road, how it looks. It's just there is nothing wrong with long arms. There is no downside. It's just plus plus plus. If you got GU or GQ, get them in your car. And next up, Superior Super Flex Swap Way Bars. What these do, pretty much the same as the Law. Long arms, they just give everything more room to move and, and, and flex without binding, without doing weird stuff. And with the super flex sway bars, they're super solid on the road, but as soon as you get off road and you're not going as fast, they just twist and turn so, so well, so easy. And having this sway bar in my car doesn't change the, the rear flex at all. We did we did try it with the sway bar in and out. Does not affect flex, but makes the car work so much better. And because it's a ute, running a rear sway bar fully in and a front sway bar on a disconnect forces the front ends to work more and not just like, and not just the whole car fall into the holes. Everything kind of works into everything because you're forcing the phone to work more by having the rear end slightly more solid. We got superior upper arms. We were going to go with a four link kit, but they haven't engineered that yet. So I'm hoping that by the time this video airs that they have that, that going and then we can go back up and get that put in because a four link would, would, would make this thing a hell of a lot better just keeping the axle entered. When we got to superior, 
My towers were actually bent up, so we had, so I had to smack them back down. They were cracked, so we have to, had to weld up the cracks, and we did a weld-in coil tower uh, brace kit, and then we did the bolt-in um, rear coil tower, tower brace because it gives you the spot to mount to the hydro bumps. There is not any cars on the road that necessarily use hydro bumps because, let's be perfectly honest, on a road car you don't need them, but the cool factor ends when you do need them, when you do end up actually using them, they just work so, so well. So I love them. And we've got a four inch Superior Hyper Flex coil. This is a Gen 1 coil that they had tucked up right in the very, very back of their warehouse. This is the Hyper Flex coil. It gives you the longest length coil. So when it's, it's flexed up, it doesn't fall out of where it has to be, but it's super soft. So it sits at that four inch height but you get a coil that's the length of like a six or a seven inch coil. So that's that's why those are so good. And we just have their hand hards front and back. They are adjustable, match the rest of the eating kit, looks good. And then the last thing going on in the back in terms of the suspension work is we have Superior 2.0 remote res shocks in a 13 inch length. I was going to go with the 2.5s, but they only go to a 10, to a 10 and a half inch length and I wanted the maximum amount of flex I could get out of this car. So 13 inch long 2.0 shocks is what we went with and the remote res with the A stability does genuinely work and you do notice a massive difference between everything there. After we got back from here, we took home a set of their diff bracing kits, their well-ons. We did that to the front and rear when we got home, got them powdered and coated down at Alpha Fit. So thank you, Jamie, for doing that for us. Then in the center, we have four, six diff gears to be able to push the, the bigger tires and be super low and, and crawly when we go off-road. And the best thing that you could do to your car in terms of proper capability, Harrow E lockers. We've got them front and rear. Those E lockers paired with all this flex, the wheels, the tires, there is nowhere that this car does not go. It just walks up. Everything is, um, is amazing off and off road. Now we are at the front. There's a lot going on in this section here. There's no coil in it because with the amount of flex it has, you can just take it out. But that is a superior, it's a lightweight five inch coil, which sits at four inch height. So this is road legal for me to run in my car. Going on in the transfer case, we have some 85% reduction gears. That is, a, that, is, that is very, very big in terms of capability, just being able to go into the low, being geared super low, first, second, third, and just crawl up anything, feet off the pedals, and I think just. In the front end, it's very, very beefy. There is a lot of goodness going on. The high jointed superior steering arms on the front and the back and five, and five link is the best thing that you can do in the front of your GU or GQ. This thing rides so, so well paired with the Superflex and sway bars. If you don't have a front sway bar in, the five link does move around a lot, but when you do have the sway bar in, thing is very implanted and it does track on the road just as good as Superflex, Hyperflex, and standard arm. So there is no reason to not go by link in, in your car or constantly talk about love it to bits. Next up in the front, those are a 12 inch length 2.0 shock. And now these are the longest that they make for GUGQ. And we got the hydro bump kit in the front, which is a welding kit. Um, took a lot to get that right. If you're not very good with a welder or a grinder, probably something that you can't tackle on your own, but the guys at Superior will do that for you if you ask. They will fabricate and get that in your car. So there is no 
excuse to not have them in because it will change how how you tackle everything off the road. Once again, got the Harrop E Locker Superior Diff Racing in the front end, the same as the back. And I have a radiator guard at the front too, which does add a lot of character into it. And if you pan and you look just down there, you can see there's a pin that is this connected on that side of the sway bar. So I can take, take that pin out and, and either have the car behave very well on the road or give me tons of flex in the front by taking that out. And that is everything that I have that is superior in the car and I wouldn't change a single thing about it. But everything that I've done to the car has been done for a reason, done, done for a purpose done right, built right, and the thing just just performs how it should be and how it always should have been. So I am in love with everything underneath. But, but yeah, th that's it. That's everything for mods. Um, in the future things that we have planned, as I said, full in career, light bar up the top, and then a small canopy and rooftop tent set up on the back. And then after that, in terms of mods, She's done, and then she's finishing it up, making it look good. But this is about as good as it's going to get in terms of a tour of the GU. Yeah, so. If you want to see more of the GU or more of what Ash and me do, jump on on Insta and search for Patriot Games Twins and buy a GU shirt if you want. Because the more of these that you buy, the more that Dad will allow me to film. GU content, so jump on it please.